Okay, good morning class. Good morning, sir. So at this point we're looking at three graphs. Um, as indicated before, um, your three graphs starts on page out of the Keeping Math Simple textbook. Starts on page 181. So in uh, the first three exercises deals with some theory of the graph that you guys have learned in grade 8. We spoke about the period of the graph and he spoke about the amplitude of the graph and the changes it had. So in the first couple of pages from page 181 to 188 it deals with the revision of grade 10 graphs. Okay, at this point you guys have done it already. Then it goes into change in period. The change in period is your grade um, 11 work. And at this point you guys have covered it as well. Okay. So now we're going to look at the examples for exercise 10, uh, 6.4. And that's on page 193. Just see, uh, exercise 6.3 basically deals with the change in period as well as the change in amplitude there. Okay, so at this point as we indicated, you guys have finished that already. Um, if you want the full lesson, it will be found in the description box below as well. Okay, so we're looking at the example on page 193. This example, page 193. Okay. So the question says draw the graph. I'm just going to get a, um, an access quickly. I'm just going to pause the video. Right, so we're looking at the graph. They ask you to draw the graph of y is equal to cos of x. Okay. So we're drawing the graph y is equal to a cos of x. Let's get this a bit bigger. Okay. Okay, so um, in the uh, in the in the full lesson, it is explained how they land it off, how how you get to the to the point where the period is actually divided by two. So I'm just going to do the sketching of the graph itself, and not labour the the, the the lesson too much on how do we get to that point as you guys have gone through it already. So the, we know that the period of the cos graph is 360 degrees. Okay. So when we draw the normal cos graph, we start at 1, goes to 90, when the 180 is at negative 1, 270 at 0, and 360 is at 1 again. But because of that half of the graph, all this points then we must divide it by a half. Okay. So if we're looking at the basic cos graph, and that is normally 360 and I divide it by a half, I'll get 720 degrees. Okay, this one here is going to be 360 degrees, of course that is 180 and so on. So if I plot that graph on this Cartesian plane here, so that would be 1, this point here which is at 180 will be 0, and 360 of course will be minus 1. Okay, so that would be minus 1. And of course, with the graph goes this side as well. So normally this is 360, but it is now 720. Why? Because why negative 360 divided by half is 720. So that would be um, 360 now. So it will be 360 and minus 1. Uh, one negative 180 and 0. That is enough information now to plot this graph. So start here. Graph there. This, of course, is going to be 360 degrees and minus 1. This is going to be 3. Sorry, that's minus 360 and minus 1. That's 360 and negative 1 as well. Okay. And that is your? Your y is equal to a half cos graph. Cos x graph. People need to ask you, 
with regards to the domain of this graph. Okay, the, the domain is x in the event of all your numbers unless it's the, the, the domain is specified from negative 360 to 360. Okay. But the range of this graph, people, what is the range? All possible? Why am I doing Does this graph exist at negative infinity on your y? No. So it's existing at negative 362. That's only on the y. Negative 1, 2. Positive 1. So the range is y is greater than equal to negative 1, but this is equal. What is the period of this graph? The period is time taken to complete one full cycle. So the period of the cos and sine graph is 360. So you say 360 divided by half is going to give you 720 degrees. Okay. What is the amplitude? The amplitude of the graph. What is the amplitude? It's a measurement from your neutral point to your maximum. That is your amplitude of the graph. Okay, so from the neutral, which is zero, with the middle of the graph to the maximum value, it's going to be a distance of one. So the amplitude of this graph is one. Okay, see what else would I ask with regards to these graphs? The main range, period, amplitude. Okay, so that was the first graph. Let's look at the next graph. Example 1, still on page 193. <coughs> so it's important to understand the mother graph, the main graph. Okay, and then from there it's easier to, to um, change the graph or trans transform the graph to what it becomes now. Okay. So now we're going to draw the graph y is equal to cos 3x. So again, I draw the basic for the mother graph. Uh, the cos graph would do that at 360. Normally, that is the cos x graph. But because of that 3, what's going to happen? I'm going to say 360 divided by 3, which gives an answer of 120. So this point here is actually 120. That is, of course, 60. That is going to give you 30. And that's going to give you 90. Can you see that, people? I'm going to change the, this graph here into, um, I'm going to make that 30, steps of 30. There's actually a way that you can do this on the calculator as well, I'll show you now. Again, the full lessons can be found in the description box below, okay. Um, salam, are you? I'm the Nina. Okay, so all right. So just pulling this graph out here, we see that it's going to be your uh, one twenty. So that is zero. Zero remains zero. Uh, 30, 60, 90, 120. So 30, 60, 90, 120. So 30, 60, 90, 120. Okay, I missed the point. 120 must come over. Let's come over. There we go. So 30, 60, 90, 1, 2. Okay, so if I sketch this graph, goes like that. It's going through these points, no? Okay, there we go, this side again. Okay. 
Okay. So again, these points here has to be stated. 360 and 1. This is going to be negative 300 and minus 1. And that point and that point. Okay, that's not needed because that is on your axis. Okay, and you write all of those points. You guys understand? So why do you notice uh, that from 0 to 360, how many cycles is in this? One, two, three cycles in 360 degrees. Can you see that? Hence is a three again. Okay? So let's look at the, the main range and those things on this graph quickly. So what is my domain? The domain is all possible? X values. Okay. So the domain of this graph. I actually drew this graph from zero from negative three sixty to three sixty. Okay. This is what I drew the graph. But most of the time they don't ask you the domain. Because so they give you the domain. Okay? What's the range? The range is all possible? Y value. So it goes from negative 1 to positive 1. So y is greater than or equal to negative 1, but less than or equal to 1. What's the amplitude of this graph? Huh? Let me be 1. Remember the amplitude is never negative. The period, the period of this graph is time to get the complete one full cycle, which is from, from 1 maximum, minimum, back to its original state. Okay, it covers itself in 120 degrees. So the period on that graph is 120. Okay. Let's look at the third one, the tan graph. They will draw the basic tan graph. And this is what the graph looks like. Okay. That is normally 90 and negative 90. Okay. You will draw this here. You will go off forces 270 and minus 270. But what effect does this half have on the graph? 90 will become now 180 and negative 180. Not so. So I'm not going to draw it on the axis. Let's just change it here. That's 180 and minus 180. So um, this, of course, here would be 360 and minus 360. Okay. So the graph normally does this. Okay, that's your 10 graph. But now half of this, of course, is 19. If I put 90 into the formula, I'm going to get 1. So that's 19, 1. Okay, and of course, 360. Halfway there is going to be 270 and minus 1. And of course, this part of the graph here, which makes this negative 270 and 1. There is that graph. Okay. Now the question is, what is the, the equation of the, uh, the asymptotes? The equation of the asymptotes is x is equal to 180 minus 1. Okay. Um, the period of this graph, period, is going to be um, how much? What is the time to get complete one full cycle from negative one eighty to one eighty? Is three sixty degrees. You see that? If they ask you for the range, which is they, they, they never ask you on the on the tan graph. Why? Because the range goes to negative infinity to positive infinity. But if asked, why is an element of all real numbers? What's the domain of this graph? All possible x values. However, if I, if, I, if I look at the, 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 the domain, we came in from negative 360 to 360. Not so. However, x is not equal to negative 180 and positive 180. Why? Because it is asymptotes. You guys understand? So that's it.
the main range amplitude. Okay, no, no amplitude here. You on the tangle. Now I'm looking at the example on page 195. This is still for exercise 6.4. This is on the same set of axes, sketch the graph of y is equal to negative cos x and y is equal to g of x equal to cos 2x. Now you see it's also a restricted domain. So I don't this is a pair the axis here. It was from negative 90. So I'm going to make it negative 100 to 270, I think it was, no? Uh, no, 180, so I'll make it 200. Okay. So it's the cos, the cos, the steps of the cos graph is normally 90 degrees. Okay. But because of the 2 in front of the x, I divide in that 90 by 2, which gives me steps of 45. Okay, and that is how I basically prepare my axes as well. Okay, so it's negative 9200. Let's cut, copy that. Oh yes, I said I'm going to show you how to do it on the calculator. To make this transparent, I mean, I don't know how to do that. Yeah, set the image. Transparency. No, that's not going to help us. Okay. So, if, if, if it was transparent, I could have made this a bit bigger. Okay. So we also want the graph to be as big as possible so that we can make more sense of what's happening there. It will be more accurate the, the, the bigger the graph is, okay? So let's just check how can we do this on the calculator. So firstly, when we're looking at the cost graph, we put the calculator on, we press mode, and we want the table format. Okay, so press mode, table, we're going to determine the coordinates of the following points. So we press cos. The cos graph we're working on. It's a half um, cos. The cos are half x. So you, you, you put the x in the calculator. As you can see, it's above the bracket sign there. You see this above that. So since it is in maroon, I press the alpha. That button with the red. Okay. So by pressing alpha, I've activated all the red keys on the calculator. Okay, we press equal. Now, GeoVix could have entered two graphs on one here. Some of you won't get the GeoVix. Okay, most of you should. We press equal to where we're starting at. Remember, I'm drawing the graph from negative 360 to 360. So I'm starting at negative 360 and I'm ending at 360. The steps is basically the interval on the graph. We know that for cos, if it was this cos x, is going to be intervals of 90. Okay, it will always be intervals of 90. Then we take whatever number is here and we divide 90 by that. So what's 90 divided by half? 180, so it will be steps of 180. Can you see that? So we put steps of 180. So you see negative 360 was negative 1. Can you see that? Hence this point here. Okay. And then? Uh, negative 180 and 0, as you can see, it's on this graph, on this axis. Does it make sense? Okay. And then 0 and 1, which is this point here. And then you press down 180 and 0, which is the button, that point there. And then 360 and negative 1. Does it make sense, people? So let's do the next one quickly. We drew, we drew the graph for y is equal to cos 3x. So uh, to get the calculator back, we just press that shift. 
not shift the study of the mode and then one it goes back okay otherwise we calculate the x funny we press shift 9 you see there what is there a clear button can you see that when you clear all you press 3 equal for yes and AC or equal again then you calculate this back to factory settings you'll see there's an R on top and whatever is then sorted there after so let's look at the cause of 3x graph so how do we, where do we start we press mode followed by table which is 7 for, for some of you it's going to be 3 yes so it's going to be cos of 3x so cos 3 to get that button there alpha x close the bracket so we, uh, there's no g of x g of x is the second graph where are we going to start people negative 360 so 360 steps but the cos graph is no cos of x graph is no always 90 but because of the 3 in front of that we can say 90 divided by 3 which is huh? 30 steps of 30 so insufficient memory which means to say it's too much for the calculator to handle ok so what we do is we then make our steps less not our steps but our starting point or ending point so let's end at 0 rather still steps of 30 so you see negative 360 and 1 can you see that people it is negative 300 and 0 no negative 330 and 0 sorry negative 300 and negative 1 negative 270 and 0 negative 240 and 1 negative 210 and 0 negative 180 and minus 1 and so on and so on you guys understand then what we do is on the other side we're going to now stop at 0 most not so but we wanted this part of the graph as well then what do we press AC the graph is still there it is equal equal again but now we're going to start at 0 now can you see that people so we can start at 30 and we're now going to end at 360 so the second part of the graph still set of 30 that gives you the other values again you guys understand people if you're going to go with steps of 45 then we're going to get a lot of irrational numbers you see yeah you get negative you get one you get negative zero comma seven or seven can you see it's some irrational numbers here. that is why if you remember the steps then it's easy then you get nice rational numbers okay let's go with the next one which is the tan graph so again we press um, so you press mode we press then table and then we we'll press 10 of x okay the 10 graph is always we're going to start at I start at negative 360 to 360 okay the 10 graph is normally steps of 45 so the sine and cos graph is steps of 90 the 10 graph will always be steps of 45 steps of 45 but now this is going to be 45 divided by half what's 45 divided by half is 90 so it must be steps of 90 can you see now negative 360 was 0 then negative 270 was 1 negative 180 is it's error the error is undefined here. can you see that people to your asymptote and then negative 90 is negative 1 0 is 0 90 is 1 180 is an error 270 is minus 1 360 is 0 do you guys understand? it's easy no? ok so let's look at this example here you have to ask on the same set of axes that we are looking at the example on page 195 Okay, so we are told that on the same set of axes, sketch the graphs of y is equal to cos x. Y is equal to, um, y is equal to f of x, which is the negative cos x, and g of x is equal to cos 2x, for x is an element of negative 90 to 180. 
So this program are talking like this together. So um, normally um, you want to clear the calculator first. Okay. So where do we start? We start with mode, then table. So your f of x is the first graph, okay? Which is negative cos x. Cos x. What's the g of x graph? Cos. Now if you that kind of girl who can't multitask, right? Which I know most of you can, right? The guys that can't. Then I would only put one in. Okay. So uh, this is going to be cos of x, uh, cos of 2x is the g of x curve. Can you see that people? So we put this equal. I'm going to start at negative 19 until 180. Now, what is the steps of the f of x graph? The cos graph is going to be steps of 90. And the g of x graph? 90 divided by 2, which is 45. So because we can't put different steps in, I put the smaller one in, which is 45. But if this was a 2 and a 3, then I would have drawn the graphs, I would have calculated the graph separately. Does it make sense? Okay. So then the one would have been um, 45 and the one would have been um, 30. You understand? So it's going to be steps of 45. So I'm going to draw the f of x graph first. So I'm going to draw it in two different colors. Okay. So the f of x graph was negative 90 and 0. And then um, negative 45 and now you see that is irrational, that is root 2 over 2. Okay? But I'm not going to plug that in. So there's enough points on this graph. Okay. So the, the third point there which is 0 and negative 1. 0 and negative 1. Okay. And then put this down. 90 and 0, 90 and 0, and 180 and, uh, 180 and 1, 180 and 1, 180. So what do I do? I do what you guys do best, join the dots, no? So it's 180 and 1. You see this is 1 here already, so I don't have to indicate the 1 because it's on the graph. Okay. Alright. So that is your f graph. So let's look at the g of x graph. The g of x graph. Neg uh, negative 90 and negative 1. Negative 90 and negative 1. And then 45 and 0 I think it is. 45 and 0. 0 and? 1, 45 and 0, One, uh, this is 90 and negative 1, correct? 180 and, uh, 135 and 0, 
Right, here we go. He says, use your graph, graph, use your graph to determine which value of x is. f of x equal to g of x. Okay, so this is actually not a fair question at this point. Because our graph firstly is not drawn to scale, that's number one. Okay. Number two, the question says, where is f of x equal to g of x? It's here. Can you see that? It's there and there. That's where they're equal. So the only point I am comfortable in saying is, x is equal to this point here, which is 180. There's no dispute there. Can you see that, people? Now, this graph is, as I said, not doing the scale, but I would assume it's around about here. Can you see that, people? So that is approximately, let's say that is negative uh, 90, and this is negative 45, no? So, and 67.5, so I would say around there. Okay. What is a 90 plus 45? Uh, 67.5. Okay, and then the third one is about the same. It normally happens midway between these values. But as I indicated, these values, these coordinates are not drawn. These um, graphs are not drawn to scale. Okay, so um, that is 45 and 90. Then give us also 67.5. The other one was negative 67.5. The other one is 67. Let's check the text real quick there, might be wrong. Yep, absolutely wrong. It's actually 60. Okay. But as I indicated, people, this is not a fair question at this point. Why? Because my graph is not drawn to scale. Okay, if I had a better graph, you would have given me a different GD. Okay. But later on, there will be ways and means of calculating that. That I could have done easily. Okay? But the reading from the graph, whatever your values on your graph seem to be, we mark it accordingly. Okay? But if we tell you to do it by equation, then the values must be exactly the values needed. Okay? That's the first question. Number two, it says, where is f of x greater than zero? People, what does f of x greater than zero mean? Is where the, 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 the y is equal to a uh, cos x graph is above the x axis, not so. So this is y is equal to zero, that is more than, and this is less than. Can you see that, people? So where is f of x greater than zero? Is f of x greater than zero here? No. Up until then, no. Why? Because it's all below the x, uh, the x axis. However, it's above from there to there only. So it's from this point of huh? 90 degrees until 180 degrees. So the continuous or breaking solution? Continuous solution from 90 to 180. So we say x has to be greater than 90 degrees, but less than 180 degrees. You see there's no equal sign there. So I'm not going to include the equal there as well. Can you see that people? And then C, the question says, C, the question says, where is g of x minus f of x? Which means to say the distance between the two graphs. Where is the distance between the two graphs? Two. Okay, provided that the g of x graph is on top of the f of x graph. Okay? So the g of x has to be on top. Is the g of x graph on top or at the bottom here? Yeah? Bottom. So that's not what I'm interested in. Okay? Yeah, it's on top. Okay, it's on top there up until that point. Not so. And then again it's at the bottom. You guys understand? So it's only between these two values. 
uh, extreme values of minus 60 and 60 that I can consider. Can you see that? See this point there. So what do you notice here? That what is this if this y value here? One and that is minus one. Can you see that's the distance of two? You see that? So they say, um, for which x value will that occur? Therefore, x is equal to zero. Then. You guys understand? Let's do the last question quickly. So this one here, let's just draw this graph quickly. So here they want you to draw the graph of 3 sine x, uh, 3 uh, y is equal to 3 sine 2x. For x is an element of negative 180 to 90. Okay. Negative 180 to 90. Okay, so it, because it's a sine 2x graph, the sine graph is normally 90, so I'm going to make it steps of 45. Okay. The example on page 196. Okay? No problem. Okay, so we put this in the calculator. The period of this graph is now 3. Uh, the amplitude is now 3. So I'm going to redo this graph, I'm going to put this 1, 2 and 3 here, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. Okay. So if you plug that into the calculator, it's going to be table, uh, 3 sine 2x. Okay, so it is equal to? There's no G of X graph. We're going to start. Negative 180 to 90 degrees. Steps of 45. So here we've got negative 180 and 0. Negative 180 and 0. Negative 135 and 3. Zero, negative forty-five and negative three. Zero and zero. Forty-five and three and zero. So when we do it, we just connect the dots here. That is forty-five and three. Negative forty-five and minus three. Negative 1, 3, 5, and 3. Okay. What's the amplitude of this graph? 3. Period. Time to get complete one foot cycle. It's normally 360 divided by 2. 2 is? 1, 8. It's the range of this graph. From minus 3 to 3. Okay. What is the other question we asked? Period amplitude the range eh? domain. Domain is x is greater than or equal to negative 180, but less than or equal to 90. And there we go. Easy, no? So what that you should be able to do? Exercise 6.4. People enjoy this every day.
Good morning, class. 